Listen, you guys got to the debate. It's clear at this point. LeBron had an amazing game. He had an amazing game for 43 minutes, Max. But the fact of the matter is the last three minutes, minutes matter. And when Kevin Durant leads his team on an 11-0 run, scores seven of those points, and puts the punctuation on it with a game-winning dagger of a three over LeBron James, he is telling you everything you need to know. The moment has arrived. It is no disrespect to LeBron James. It is no indictment on his legacy. It is no statement on where he lands on the all-time list. But as for now, as Paul Pierce, who has been very, very out front and correct on this has been, as have I, Kevin Durant is the best player in the world So, so let me get this straight. Kyle Korver misses a corner three. Kevin Durant's teammates are clearly better than LeBron's teammates, and therefore Durant's better than LeBron. You understand if they flip teams, it wouldn't matter. LeBron wouldn't need heroics the, because the Warriors would have like a 30-point lead by that point in the game. You understand? Like, if you isolate their play, LeBron had a better game beginning to end. Do you also understand that, to end. that three to points? End. Yeah, sure. Listen, Durant outscored him in the fourth quarter. In the third quarter, LeBron had seven points. Durant had one. No, excuse me. In the third quarter, Durant had one. In the fourth quarter, LeBron had seven. Like, LeBron had a better fourth quarter than, Le than Durant had a third quarter. And if you think that they add, they have some formula where they go, damn, Durant scored 14 points in the fourth quarter. Let's not count that for 28 points because it's... No, all the points count Listen, the same. They all, I mean, literally, they count the same. If I may, because this rebuttal has been something that's been popular. It's called the LeBron excuse rebuttal. What you do is you're explaining away to me why Kevin Durant is outperforming LeBron James in the high leverage moments. When you tell me that he has better teammates, you're telling me why Kevin Durant is outperforming him. Sure. You're, you are granting me the premise from which I start, that Kevin Durant is the best player in the world today. As evidence, he is outperforming LeBron James, and you spend your time telling oh. me why. Well, That's fine. Hold on. Basketball, one more thing. Basketball, hold on. Hold I gave you a and I heard this over here. Basketball is played five on five, not one on one. That's so not, in a one on one game, Kevin Durant's teammates allow him to make his physical advantages at this point in their careers I've heard apparent. You say this. That's I heard, all. I heard you say it five minutes ago. I heard you say this. The problem with that argument is you picked the Warriors in six. You didn't pick them in four. So if Kevin Durant is amazingly outgunned, if he has the, the, the weapons LeBron James could never even imagine, why didn't you pick the sweep? Or, or like I did, pick it in five. You picked oh, a close you, series. You, is, so that a, is that a rhetorical that, question? So now that it, it aids your argument, it's, oh, my God, this was never close to begin with. But you should have picked him in there, four then, man. LeBron James's teammates, until last night, where it was, in fact, a close game, could have gone either way, LeBron James's teammates have not shown up until game three. So they fell down in an 0-2 hole. Very simple. Can the one individual who actually knows basketball interject here? You I already did. Party? Are you going to join the party? No, 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 I'm just waiting because I, clearly y'all knowledge is sorely lacking. The point that I'm trying to make to you is this. First of all, Will, I don't have to lean towards your point because weeks ago I was arguing with Max Kellerman as I've been arguing all year long that the gap between LeBron James and Kevin Durant was never that wide. Fair. They had a different Fair. skill set. They had a different skill set. I said just like LeBron was a locomotive coming at you at 260 pounds, look, Kevin Durant is 6'11 with a 7'6 wingspan who has guard skills and can pull up from 30. Fair. Where so, were you so, yesterday, so, 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 No, no, no. I was the same place yesterday where I am right now. Same this place? Is the same exact place. And that's where I'm going with this because I'm not going to call him a better player than LeBron James. What I am going to say, however, he has always been able to shoot better than LeBron James. He has always been a better perimeter shooter than LeBron James. He has always been a better free throw shooter than LeBron James. Hold on, Molly. And right now what we have is a situation that Kevin Durant, he isn't just averaging 34. He isn't just shooting 50 plus percent, 56 percent from the field. He's shooting 56 percent, 52 percent from three-point range. This dude is a sniper extraordinaire. We got to give him credit for that. But to get to Max's point, because that's where I really want to go with this. Max, in all seriousness, I'm asking you to pause here for a second and consider what I'm saying. No one is going to dispute your point's about five on five. It's a team game. Kevin Durant has less obligation, less work, because he has a better team. We get all of that. What I'm asking you to think about is this. Kevin Durant walked into the series, and everything he has done and everything he has said is, LeBron, I'm coming for you. And not only that, when the game starts, when the game is going on, when the game finishes, this dude is on him. LeBron is on him. It's not like Kevin Durant is 6'11 and Steph Curry is 6'3 and they're playing against different guys. No, they're going at each other. And when it counts, 
when it's time to close, this dude is has doing shown it. up. Yeah, but if LeBron is, and, and I'm like, the Warriors, you cannot, he would be able to do that. the exact I, same thing. I, that's the answer. But let me just address first. You said, let me consider that. Sure. I have already conceded that that Kevin Durant, in high leverage moments, he's taken that away from LeBron. What LeBron's done in recent years, he takes the foot off the pedal in the regular season. Durant's catching up to him. Steph's catching up to him. This guy's. But when it comes down to it in high leverage moment in the playoffs, LeBron could do whatever he wants. Those days appear to have been uh, to have been passed us by, and Durant's now the guy in high leverage moments who can take it up a notch because he's longer, he's Pause younger, that he's because faster. I'm coming back. You just said that he's done that before. Yes. Let's take the game when Ray Allen hit the three to mm -hmm. save Miami. If you recall, over time, LeBron James comes on strong. But during the end of regulation, when the ropes were surrounding it, LeBron was missing. Right. He's not a shooter. Right. He's not a sniper. Right. Hold and on. what happens when guys can't shoot, what happens when guys aren't great shooters ahead, is well. the feeling ahead, well. is because their offense isn't the scoring offense in, the cr in crunch time that they're somehow lacking something. In addition to that, I will also tell you that the Jordan gene, that thing that we've smelled on LeBron, that if he had that, he'd clearly be the greatest player of all time. There's a reason he's not the greatest player of all time. But his performance yesterday, though in high leverage moments, Durant yeah. got him. And by the way, you guys he haven't even grown up. Until he wasn't moments. Until he wasn't, it mattered. He wasn't mattered. trying to guard Durant with the game on the line either, really. It's like Dur Durant got him there too. But the overall performance of everybody on either side in that game was Durant was, was Durant was great when you needed him. LeBron was the most valuable player oh, on well. either team.